Section 34 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. 1 Kings, chapters 1 through 7. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. Now King David was old and stricken in years, and they covered him with clothes, but he got no heat. Wherefore his servants said unto him, Let there be sought for my lord the king, a young virgin, and let her stand before the king, and let her cherish him, and let her lie in thy bosom, that my lord the king may get heat. So they sought for a fair damsel throughout all the coasts of Israel, and found Abishag, a Shunammite, and brought her to the king. And the damsel was very fair, and cherished the king, and ministered to him, but the king knew her not. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen, and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time, saying, What hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. And he conferred with Joab the son of Zeruiah, and with Abiathar the priest. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. But Zadok the priest, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and Nathan the prophet, and Shimei, and Rei, and the mighty men which belonged to David, were not with Adonijah. And Adonijah slew sheep and oxen and fat cattle up by the stone of Zoheleth which is by Enbrogel, and called all his brethren the king's sons, and all the men of Judah the king's servants. But Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah, and the mighty men, and Solomon his brother, he called not. Therefore Nathan spoke unto Bathsheba the mother of Solomon, saying, Hast thou not heard that Adonijah, the son of Haggith, doth reign, and David our Lord knoweth it not? Now therefore come, let me, I pray thee, give thee counsel, that thou mayst save thine own life, and the life of thy son Solomon. Go and get thee in unto King David, and say unto him, didst not thou, my lord, O king, swear unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? Why then doth Adonijah reign? Behold, while thou yet talkest there with the king, I also will come in after thee, and confirm thy words. And Bathsheba went in unto the king into the chamber, and the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite ministered unto the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did obeisance unto the king. And the king said, What wouldst thou? And she said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the lord thy god unto thine handmaid, saying, Assuredly Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne. And now, behold, Adonijah reigneth. And now, my lord the king, thou knowest it not. And he hath slain oxen and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the sons of the king, and Abiathar the priest, and Joab the captain of the host. But Solomon, thy servant, hath he not called? And thou, my lord, O king, 
the eyes of all Israel are upon thee, that thou shouldst tell them who shall sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. Otherwise it shall come to pass, when my lord the king shall sleep with his fathers, that I and my son Solomon shall be counted offenders. And lo, while she yet talked with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. And they told the king, saying, Behold, Nathan the prophet. And when he was come in before the king, he bowed himself before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, hast thou said, Adonijah shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne? For he is gone down this day, and hath slain oxen, and fat cattle, and sheep in abundance, and hath called all the king's sons, and the captains of the host, and Abiathar the priest. And behold, they eat and drink before him, and say, God save King Adonijah. But me, even me, thy servant, and Zadok the priest, and Beniah the son of Jehoiada, and thy servant Solomon, hath he not called. Is this thing done by my lord the king? And thou hast not shewed it unto thy servant, who should sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? Then King David answered and said, Call me Bathsheba. And she came into the king's presence, and stood before the king. And the king sware and said, as the Lord liveth, that hath redeemed my soul out of all distress, even as I swear unto thee by the Lord of God, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me, and he shall sit upon my throne in my stead, even so will I certainly do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth, and did reverence to the king, and said, Let my lord King David live for ever. And King David said, Call me Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada. And they came before the king. The king also said unto them, Take with you the servants of your lord, and cause Solomon, my son, to ride upon mine own mule, and bring him down to Gihon. And let Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, anoint him there king over Israel, and blow ye with the trumpet, and say, God save King Solomon. Then he shall come up after him, that he may come and sit upon my throne, for he shall be king in my stead, and I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and over Judah. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada answered the king and said, Amen. The Lord God of my Lord, the King, say so too. As the Lord hath been with my Lord, the King, even so be he with Solomon, and make his throne greater than the throne of my Lord, King David. So Zadok the priest, and Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and the Cherethites and the Pelethites went down and caused Solomon to ride upon King David's mule, and brought him to Gihon. And Zadok the priest took an horn of oil out of the tabernacle, and anointed Solomon. And they blew the trumpet, and all the people said, God save King Solomon. And all the people came up after him, 
and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy so that the earth rent with the sound of them and adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard it as they had made an end of eating and when joab heard the sound of the trumpet he said wherefore is this noise of the city being in an uproar and while he yet spake behold jonathan the son of abiathar the priest came and adonijah said unto him come in for thou art a valiant man and bringest good tidings and jonathan answered and said to adonijah verily our lord king david hath made solomon king and the king hath sent with him zadok the priest and nathan the prophet and benaiah the son of jehoiada and the cherethites and the pelethites and they have caused him to ride upon the king's mule and sadoc the priest and nathan the prophet have anointed him king in gihon and they are coming up from thence rejoicing so that the city rang again this is the noise that he hath heard and also solomon sitteth on the throne of the kingdom moreover the king's servants came to bless our lord king david saying god make the name of solomon better than thy name and his throne greater than thy throne and the king bowed himself upon the bed and also thus said the king blessed be the lord god of israel which hath given one to sit on my throne this day mine eyes even seeing it and all the guests that were with adonijah were afraid and rose up and went every man his way and adonijah feared because of solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar and it was told solomon saying behold adonijah feareth king solomon for lo he hath caught hold on the horns of the altar saying let king solomon swear unto me to-day that he will not slay his servant with the sword and solomon said if he will shew himself a worthy man there shall not an hair of him fall to the earth but if wickedness shall be found in him he shall die so king solomon sent and they brought him down from the altar and he came and bowed himself to king solomon and solomon said unto him go to thine house chapter two now the days of david drew nigh that he should die and he charged solomon his son saying i go the way of all the earth be thou strong therefore and shew thyself a man and keep the charge of the lord thy god to walk in his ways to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies as it is written in the law of moses that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself that the lord may continue his word which he spake concerning me saying if thy children take heed to their way to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul there shall not fail thee said he a man on the throne of israel moreover thou knowest also what joab the son of zeruiah did to me and what he did to the two captains of the hosts of israel and to abner the son of ner and unto amasa the son of jether whom he slew and shed the blood of war in peace 
and put the blood of war upon his girdle that was about his loins, and in his shoes that were on his feet. Do therefore according to thy wisdom, and let not his hoar head go down to the grave in peace. But shew kindness unto the sons of Barzillai the Gileadite, and let them be of those that eat at thy table. For so they came to me when I was fled, because of Absalom thy brother. And behold, thou hast with thee Shimei the son of Gera, a Benjamite of Bahurim, which cursed me with a grievous curse in the day when I went to Mahanaim. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Now, therefore hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man, and knowest what thou oughtest to do unto him. But his hoar head bring thou down to the grave with blood. So David slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David. And the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. And Adonijah the son of Haggith came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. And she said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. He said, Moreover, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And she said, Say on. And he said, Thou knowest that the kingdom was mine, and that all Israel set their faces on me, that I should reign. Howbeit, the kingdom is turned about, and it is become thy brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now I ask one petition of thee, deny me not. And she said unto him, Say on. And he said, Speak, I pray thee, unto Solomon the king, for he will not say thee nay, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite to wife. And Bathsheba said, Well, I will speak for thee unto the king. Bathsheba therefore went unto king Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her, and bowed himself unto her, and sat down on his throne, and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother, and she sat on his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee. I pray thee, say me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on, my mother, for I will not say thee nay. And she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother, even for him, and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon sware by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah have not spoken this word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord liveth, which hath established me, and set me on the throne of David my father, and who hath made me an house, as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death this day. 
and King Solomon, sent by the hand of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him, that he died. And unto Abiathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Anathoth, unto thine own fields, for thou art worthy of death, but I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father, and because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned after Adonisha, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord, and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go fall upon him. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of the Lord, and said unto him, Thus saith the king, Come forth. And he said, Nay, but I will die here. And Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Thus said Joab, and thus he answered me. And the king said unto him, Do as he hath said, and fall upon him, and bury him, that thou mayst take away the innocent blood which Joab shed from me and from the house of my father. And the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head, which fell upon two men more righteous and better than he, and slew them with the sword, my father David not knowing thereof, to wit, Abner, the son of Ner, captain of the host of Israel, and Amasa, the son of Jether, captain of the host of Judah. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab, and upon the head of his seed for ever. But upon David, and upon his seed, and upon his house, and upon his throne, shall there be peace for ever from the Lord. So Benaiah the son of Jehoiada went up and fell upon him and slew him. And he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. And the king put Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, in his room over the host. And Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. And the king sent and called for Shimei, and said unto him, Build thee an house in Jerusalem, and dwell there, and go not forth thence any whither. For it shall be that on the day thou goest out, and passest over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon thine own head. And Shimei said unto the king, The saying is good, as my lord the king hath said, so will thy servant do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem many days. And it came to pass, at the end of three years, that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Achish, son of Mekah, king of Gath. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants be in Gath. And Shimei rose, and saddled his ass, and went to Gath, to Achish, to seek his servants. And Shimei went, and brought his servants from Gath. 
and it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gath, and was come again. And the king sent and called for Shimei, and said unto him, Did I not make thee to swear by the Lord, and protested unto thee, saying, Know for a certain on the day thou goest out and walkest abroad, any whither, that thou shalt surely die? And thou saidst unto me, The word I have heard is good. Why then hast thou not kept the oath of the Lord, and the commandment that I have charged thee with? The king said, Moreover to Shimei, Thou knowest all the wickedness which thine heart is privy to, as thou didst to David my father. Therefore the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thine own head. And King Solomon shall be blessed, and the throne of David shall be established before the Lord for ever. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, which went out and fell upon him, that he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Chapter 3 Then Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter, and brought her into the city of David, until he had made an end of building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Only the people sacrificed in high places, because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God asked, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made thy servant, instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give, therefore, thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this by so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord, that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honour, 
so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days and if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father david did walk then i will lengthen thy days and solomon awoke and behold it was a dream and he came to jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants then came there two women that were harlots unto the king and stood before him and the one woman said o my lord i and this woman dwell in one house and i was delivered of a child with her in the house and it came to pass the third day after that i was delivered that this woman was delivered also and we were together there was no stranger with us in the house save we two in the house and this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it and she arose at the midnight and took my son from beside me while thine handmaid slept and laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom and when i rose in the morning to give my child suck behold it was dead but when i had considered it in the morning behold it was not my son which i did bear and the other woman said nay but the living is my son and the dead is thy son and this said no but the dead is thy son and the living is my son thus they spake before the king then said the king this one saith this is my son that liveth and thy son is dead and the other saith nay but thy son is the dead and my son is the living and the king said bring me a sword and they brought a sword before the king and the king said divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other then spake the woman whose the living child was unto the king for her bowels yearned upon her son and she said o my lord give her the living child and in no wise slay it but the other said let it be neither mine nor thine but divide it then the king answered and said give her the living child and in no wise slay it she is the mother thereof and all israel heard of the judgment which the king had judged and they feared the king for they saw that the wisdom of god was in him to do judgment chapter four so king solomon was king over all israel and these were the princes which he had azariah the son of zadok the priest elihoref and ahiah the sons of shisha scribes and jehoshaphat the son of ahilud the recorder and benaiah the son of jehoiada was over the host and zadok and abiathar were the priests and azariah the son of nathan was over the officers and zabud the son of nathan was principal officer and the king's friend and ahishar was over the household and adoniram the son of abda was over the tribute and solomon had twelve officers over all israel which provided victuals for the king and his household each man his month and a year made provision and these are their names the son of hur in mount ephraim 
the son of Dekar and Mekaz, and Inchalbim, and Beth Shemesh, and Ilan Bethanan, the son of Hesed, in Eruboth, to him pertained Soko, and all the land of Hefer, the son of Abinadab, in all the region of Dor, which had Tapheth, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Bena, the son of Ahilud, to him pertained Tanak and Megiddo, and all Bethshean, which is by Zartana, beneath Jezreel, from Bethshean to Abelmola, even unto the place that is beyond Jochnium. The son of Geber in Ramoth Gilead, to him pertained the towns of Jair, the son of Manasseh, which are in Gilead. To him also pertained the region of Argob, which is in Bashan, threescore great cities, with walls and brazen bars. Ahinadab, the son of Edo, had Mahanaim. Ahimaaz was in Naphtali. He also took Basemeth, the daughter of Solomon, to wife. Ana, the son of Hushai, was in Asher and in Aloth. Jehoshaphat, the son of Parua, in Issachar. Shimei, the son of Elah, in Benjamin. Geber, the son of Uri, was in the country of Gilead, in the country of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and of Og, king of Bashan. And he was the only officer which was in the land. Judah and Israel were many as the sand which is by the sea in multitude, eating and drinking and making merry. And Solomon reigned over all kingdoms, from the river unto the land of the Philistines, and unto the border of Egypt. They brought presents and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's provision for one day was thirty measures of fine flour, and threescore measures of meal, ten fat oxen, and twenty oxen out of the pastures, and an hundred sheep, beside harts and roebucks, and fallow deer, and fatted owl. For he had dominion over all the region on this side, the river, from Tifsa even to Asa, over all the kings on this side, the river. And he had peace on all sides round about him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, every man under his vine and under his fig tree, from Dan even to Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had forty thousand stalls of horses for his chariots, and twelve thousand horsemen. And those officers provided victual for King Solomon, and for all that came unto King Solomon's table, every man in his month. They lacked nothing. Barley also, and straw, for the horses and dromedaries, brought they unto the place where the officers were, every man according to his charge. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much, and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the east country, and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men, than Ethan the Ezrahite, and Heman, and Chalcol, and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his fame was in all nations round about. And he spake three thousand proverbs, and his songs were a thousand and five. And he spake of trees, from the cedar tree that is in Lebanon, even unto the hyssop that springeth out of the wall. He spake also of beasts, and of fowl, and of creeping things, and of fishes. 
and there came of all people to hear the wisdom of Solomon, from all kings of the earth which had heard of his wisdom. Chapter 5 And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent his servants unto Solomon, for he had heard that they had anointed him king in the room of his father, for Hiram was ever a lover of David. And Solomon sent to Hiram, saying, Thou knowest how that David, my father, could not build an house unto the name of the Lord his God, for the wars which were about him on every side, until the Lord put them under the soles of his feet. But now the Lord my God hath given me rest on every side, so that there is neither adversary nor evil occurrent. And behold, I purpose to build an house unto the name of the Lord my God, as the Lord spake unto David my father, saying, Thy son whom I will set upon thy throne in thy room, he shall build an house unto my name. Now therefore command thou that they hew me cedar trees out of Lebanon, and my servants shall be with thy servants, and unto thee will I give hire for thy servants, according to all that thou shalt appoint. For thou knowest that there is not among us any that can skill to hew timber like unto the Sidonians. And it came to pass, when Hiram heard the words of Solomon, that he rejoiced greatly, and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, which hath given unto David a wise son over this great people. And Hiram sent to Solomon, saying, I have considered the things which thou sentest to me for, and I will do all thy desire concerning timber of cedar, and concerning timber of fir. My servants shall bring them down from Lebanon unto the sea, and I will convey them by sea in floats unto the place that thou shalt appoint me, and will cause them to be discharged there, and thou shalt receive them, and thou shalt accomplish my desire in giving food for my household. So. Hiram gave Solomon cedar trees and fir trees, according to all his desire. And Solomon gave Hiram twenty thousand measures of wheat for food to his household, and twenty measures of pure oil. Thus gave Solomon to Hiram year by year. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom, as he promised him. And there was peace between Hiram and Solomon, and they two made a league together. And King Solomon raised a levy out of all Israel, and the levy was thirty thousand men. And he sent them to Lebanon, ten thousand a month by courses. A month they were in Lebanon, and two months at home. and. Adoniram was over the levy, and Solomon had threescore and ten thousand that bear burdens, and fourscore thousand hewers in the mountains. Beside the chief of Solomon's officers which were over the work, three thousand and three hundred, which ruled over the people that wrought in the work. And the king commanded and they brought great stones, costly stones, and hewed stones, to lay the foundation of the house. And Solomon's builders and Hiram's builders did hew them, and the stones' corers. So they prepared timber and stones to build the house. Chapter 6 and it came to pass in the four hundred and eightieth year 
after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Ziph, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. And the house which Solomon built for the Lord, the length thereof was threescore cubits, and the breadth thereof twenty cubits, and the height thereof thirty cubits. And the porch before the temple of the house, twenty cubits was the length thereof, according to the breadth of the house, and ten cubits was the breadth thereof before the house. And for the house he made windows of narrow lights. And against the wall of the house he built chambers round about, against the walls of the house round about, both of the temple and of the oracle. And he made chambers round about. The nethermost chamber was five cubits broad, and the middle was six cubits broad, and the third was seven cubits broad. For without, in the wall of the house, he made narrowed rests round about, that the beams should not be fastened in the walls of the house. And the house, when it was in building, was built of stone, made ready for it, was brought thither, so that there was neither hammer nor axe nor any tool of iron heard in the house while it was in building. The door for the middle chamber was in the right side of the house, and they went up with the winding stairs into the middle chamber, and out of the middle into the third. So he built the house and finished it, and covered the house with beams and boards of cedar. And then he built chambers against all the house, five cubits high, and they rested on the house with timber of cedar. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which thou art in building, if thou wilt walk in my statutes and execute my judgments, and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then I will perform thy word with thee, which I spake unto David thy father, and I will dwell among the children of Israel, and will not forsake my people Israel. So Solomon built the house and finished it. And he built the walls of the house within with boards of cedar, both the floor of the house and the walls of the ceiling, and he covered them on the inside with wood, and covered the floor of the house with planks of fir. And he built twenty cubits on the sides of the house, both the floor and the walls, with boards of cedar. He even built them for it within, even for the oracle, even for the most holy place. And the house, that is, the temple before it, was forty cubits long, and the cedar of the house within was carved with knobs and open flowers. All was cedar. There was no stone seen. And the oracle he prepared in the house within to set there the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the oracle in the fore part was twenty cubits in length and twenty cubits in breadth and twenty cubits in the height thereof. And he overlaid it with pure gold, and so covered the altar, which was of cedar. So Solomon overlaid the house within with pure gold, and he made a partition by the chains of gold before the oracle, and he overlaid it with gold. And the whole house he overlaid with gold, until he had finished all the house. Also, the whole altar that was by the oracle he overlaid with gold. And within the oracle he made two cherubims of olive tree, each ten cubits high, and five cubits was the one wing of the cherub, and five cubits the other wing of the cherub, from the uttermost part of the one wing unto the uttermost part of the other were ten cubits and the other cherub was ten cubits. Both the cherubims were of one measure and one size. The height of the one cherub was ten cubits, and so it was of the other cherub. 
and he set the cherubims within the inner house and they stretched forth the wings of the cherubims so that the wing of the one touched the one wall and the wing of the other cherub touched the other wall and their wings touched one another in the midst of the house and he overlaid the cherubims with gold and he carved all the walls of the house round about with carved figures of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers within and without and the floors of the house he overlaid with gold within and without and for the entering of the oracle he made doors of olive tree the lintel and side posts were a fifth part of the wall the two doors also were of olive tree and he carved upon them carvings of cherubims and palm trees and open flowers and overlaid them with gold and spread gold upon the cherubims and upon the palm trees so also made he for the door of the temple posts of olive tree a fourth part of the wall and the two doors which were fir tree the two leaves of the one door were folding and the two leaves of the other were folding and he carved thereon cherubims and palm trees and open flowers and covered them with gold fitted upon the carved work and he built the inner court with three rows of hewed stone and a row of cedar beams in the fourth year was the foundation of the house of the lord laid in the month ziph and in the eleventh year in the month bool which is the eighth month was the house finished throughout all the parts thereof and according to all the fashion of it so was he seven years in building it chapter seven but solomon was building his own house thirteen years and he finished all his house he built also the house of the forest of lebanon the length thereof was an hundred cubits and the breadth thereof fifty cubits and the height thereof thirty cubits upon four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams upon the pillars and it was covered with cedar above upon the beams that lay on forty-five pillars fifteen in a row and there were windows in three rows and light was against light in three ranks and all the doors and posts were square with the windows and light was against light in three ranks and he made a porch of pillars the length thereof was fifty cubits and the breadth thereof thirty cubits and the porch was before them and the other pillars and the thick beam were before them then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge even the porch of judgment and it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other and his house where he dwelt had another court within the porch which was of like work solomon made also an house for pharaoh's daughter whom he had taken to wife like unto this porch all these were of costly stones according to the measures of huge stones sawed with saws within and without even from the foundation unto the coping and so on the outside toward the great court and the foundation was of costly stones even great stones of ten cubits and stones of eight cubits and above were costly stones after the measure of huge stones and cedars and the great court round about was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams both for the inner court of the house of the lord and for the porch of the house and king solomon sent and fetched hiram 
out of Tyre. He was the widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in brass, and he was filled with wisdom and understanding, and cunning to work all works in brass. And he came to King Solomon, and wrought all his work. For he cast two pillars of brass of eighteen cubits high apiece, and a line of twelve cubits did compass either of them about. And he made two chapiters of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of the one chapiter was five cubits, and the height of the other chapiter was five cubits. And nets of checker work, and wreaths of chain work, for the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars, seven for the one chapiter, and seven for the other chapiter. And he made the pillars, and two rows round about upon the one network, to cover the chapiters that were upon the top with pomegranates, and so did he for the other chapiter, and the chapiters that were upon the top of the pillars were of lily work, in the porch four cupids, and the chapiters upon the two pillars had pomegranates also above, over against the belly which was by the network, and the pomegranates were two hundred in rows around upon the other chapiter. And he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple. And he set up the right pillar, and called the name thereof Jachin. And he set up the left pillar, and called the name thereof Boaz. And upon the top of the pillars was lily work. So was the work of the pillars finished. And he made a molten sea, ten cubits from the one brim to the other. It was round all about, and its height was five cubits, and a line of thirty cubits did compass it round about. And under the brim of it round about there were knops compassing it, ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about. The knops were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above them, and all their hinder parts were inward. And it was an handbreadth thick, and the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup, with flowers of lilies. It contained two thousand baths. And he made ten bases of brass. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height of it. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubims. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin work. And every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass, and the four corners thereof had undersetters. Under the laver were undersetters molten at the side of every addition. And the mouth of it within the chapiter and above was a cubit, but the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubit and a half, and also upon the mouth of it were gravings with their borders, four square, not round, and under the borders were four wheels, and the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half a cubit. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel, their axle-trees, and their knaves, and their fellows, and their spokes, were all molten. And there were four undersetters to the four corners of one base, and the undersetters were off the very base itself. And in the top of the base was there a round compass of half a cubit high, and on the top of the base the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. 
for on the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof he graved cherubims lions and palm trees according to the proportion of every one and additions round about after this manner he made the ten bases all of them had one casting one measure and one size then made he ten lavers of brass one laver contained forty baths and every laver was four cubits and upon every one of the ten bases one laver and he put five bases on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house and he set the sea on the right side of the house eastward over against the south and hiram made the lavers and the shovels and the basins so hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made king solomon for the house of the lord the two pillars and the two bowls of the chapiters that were on the top of the two pillars and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapiters which were upon the top of the pillars and four hundred pomegranates for the two networks even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapiters that were upon the pillars and the ten bases and ten lavers on the bases and one sea and twelve oxen under the sea and the pots and the shovels and the basins and all these vessels which hiram made to king solomon for the house of the lord were of bright brass in the plain of jordan did the king cast them in the clay ground between succoth and sarthen and solomon left all the vessels unweighed because they were exceeding many neither was the weight of the brass found out and solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the lord the altar of gold and the table of gold whereupon the shewbread was and the candlesticks of pure gold five on the right side and five on the left before the oracle with the flowers and the lamps and the tongs of gold and the bowls and the snuffers and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold and the hinges of gold both for the doors of the inner house the most holy place and for the doors of the house to wit of the temple so was ended all the work that king solomon made for the house of the lord and solomon brought in the things which david his father had dedicated even the silver and the gold and the vessels did he put among the treasures of the house of the lord end of section thirty four Section 35 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. First Kings, chapters 8 to 14. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 8. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel, and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto King Solomon in Jerusalem that they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the lord out of the city of david which is zion and all the men of israel assembled themselves unto king solomon at the feast in the month athenim which is the seventh month and all the elders of israel came and the priests took up the ark and they brought up the ark of the lord and the tabernacle of the congregation, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. Even those did the priests and the Levites bring up. And King Solomon and all the congregation of Israel that were assembled unto him were with him before the ark, sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be told nor numbered for multitude. 
when the priests brought in the ark of the covenant of the lord unto his place into the oracle of the house to the most holy place even under the wings of the cherubims for the cherubims spread forth their two wings over the place of the ark and the cherubims covered the ark and the staves thereof above and they drew out the staves that the ends of the staves were seen out in the holy place before the oracle and they were not seen without and there they are unto this day there was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which moses put there as horeb when the lord made a covenant with the children of israel when they came out of the land of egypt and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the lord so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the glory of the lord had filled the house of the lord then spake solomon the lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness i have surely built thee an house to dwell in a settled place for thee to abide in for ever and the king turned his face about and blessed all the congregation of israel and all the congregation of israel stood and he said blessed be the lord god of israel which spake with his mouth unto david my father and hath with his hand fulfilled it saying since the day that i brought forth my people israel out of egypt i chose no city out of all the tribes of israel to build an house that my name might be therein but i chose david to be over my people israel and it was in the heart of david my father to build an house for the name of the lord god of israel and the lord said unto david my father whereas it was in thine heart to build an house unto my name thou didst well that it was in thine heart nevertheless thou shalt not build the house but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins he shall build the house unto my name and the lord hath performed his word that he spake and i am risen up in the room of david my father and sit on the throne of israel as the lord promised and have built an house for the name of the lord god of israel and i have set there a place for the ark wherein is the covenant of the lord which he made with our fathers when he brought them out of the land of egypt and solomon stood before the altar of the lord in the presence of all the congregation of israel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and he said lord god of israel there is no god like thee in heaven above or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart who hast kept with thy servant david my father that thou promisedst him thou spakest also with thy mouth and hast fulfilled it with thine hand as it is this day therefore now lord god of israel keep with thy servant david my father that thou promisedst him saying there shall not fail thee a man in my sight to sit on the throne of israel so that thy children take heed to their way that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me and now o god of israel let thy word i pray thee be verified which thou spakest unto thy servant david my father but will god indeed dwell on the earth behold the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain thee 
how much less this house that i have builded yet have thou respect unto the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication o lord my god to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee to-day that thine eyes may be open toward this house night and day even toward the place of which thou hast said my name shall be there that thou mayest hearken unto the prayer which thy servant shall make toward this place and hearken thou to the supplication of thy servant and of thy people israel when they shall pray toward this place and hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and when thou hearest forgive if any man trespass against his neighbour and an oath be laid upon him to cause him to swear and the oath come before thine altar in this house then hear thou in heaven and do and judge thy servants condemning the wicked to bring his way upon his head and justifying the righteous to give him according to his righteousness when thy people israel be smitten down before the enemy because they have sinned against me and shall turn again to thee and confess thy name and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people israel that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance if there be in the land famine if there be pestilence blasting mildew locust or if there be caterpillar if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities whatsoever plague whatsoever sickness there be what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people israel which shall know every man the plague of his own heart and spread forth his hands toward this house then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest for thou even thou only knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people israel but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of thy stretched out arm when he shall come and pray toward this house hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people israel and that they may know that this house which i have builded is called by thy name if thy people go out to battle against their enemy whithersoever thou shalt send them and shall pray unto the lord toward the city which thou hast chosen and toward the house that i have built for thy name then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause if they sin against thee for there is no man that sinneth not and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captives 
unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart, and with all their soul, in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer, and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them, who carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people, and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt, from the midst of the furnace of iron, that thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant, and unto the supplication of thy people Israel, to hearken unto them, and all that they call for unto thee. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth, to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses, thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. And it was so, that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord, from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood, and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice, saying, The Lord our God be with us, as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us, nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him, to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these, my words, wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord, be nigh unto the Lord our God, day and night, that he maintain the cause of his servant, and the cause of his people Israel, at all times, as the matter shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God, and that there is none else. Let your heart, therefore, be perfect with the Lord our God, to walk in his statutes, and to keep his commandments, as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen, and an hundred and twenty thousand sheep. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day did the king hallow the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings, and meat offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings, and meat offerings, and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast, and all Israel with him, a great congregation, from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt, before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even fourteen days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king, and went unto their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David.
his servant, and for Israel, his people. Chapter 9 And it came to pass, when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared unto him at Gibeon. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed this house, which thou hast built, to put my name there for ever, and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. And if thou wilt walk before me, as David thy father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded thee, and wilt keep my statutes and my judgments, then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel for ever, as I promised to David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods, and worship them, then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and this house which I have hallowed for my name will I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. And at this house, which is high, every one that passeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss, and they shall say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land, and to this house? And they shall answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt, and have taken hold upon other gods, and have worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath the Lord brought upon them all this evil. And it came to pass, at the end of twenty years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Now Hiram the king of Tyre had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees, and with gold, according to all his desire. That then King Solomon gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. And Hiram came out from Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? And he called them the land of Kabul unto this day. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. And this is the reason of the levy which King Solomon raised, for to build the house of the Lord, and his own house, and Milo, and the wall of Jerusalem, and Hazor, and Megiddo, and Jezer. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up and taken Gezer, and burnt it with fire, and slain the Canaanites that dwell in the city, and given it for a present unto his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon built Jezer, and Beth Horon, the nether, and Balath and Tadmor in the wilderness of the land and all the cities of store that Solomon had, and cities for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. And all the people that were left of the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel, their children that were left after them in the land, 
whom the children of Israel also were not able utterly to destroy, upon those did Solomon levy a tribute of bond service unto this day. But of the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen. But they were men of war, and his servants, and his princes, and his captains, and rulers of his chariots, and his horsemen. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work, five hundred and fifty, which bear rule over the people that wrought in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David unto her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then did he build Milo. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings, and peace offerings upon the altar which he built unto the Lord. And he burnt incense upon the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished his house. And King Solomon made a navy of ships in Ezion Geber, which is beside Eloth, on the shore of the Red Sea, in the land of Edom. And Hiram sent in the navy, his servants, shipmen, that had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. And they came to Ophir, and fetched from thence gold, four hundred and twenty talents, and brought it to King Solomon. Chapter 10 And when the Queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices, and very much gold, and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom, and the house he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cup-bearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no more spirit in her. And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts, and of thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came, and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighted in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because the Lord loved Israel for ever. Therefore made he thee king, to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices, very great store, and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon, and the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees, and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. And King Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire. Whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country.
she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred threescore and six talents of gold, beside that he had of the merchantmen, and of the traffic of the spice merchants, and of all the kings of Arabia, and the governors of the country. And King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold. Six hundred shekels of gold went to one target. And he made three hundred shields of beaten gold. Three pound of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory, and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side on the place of the seat, and two lions stood beside the stays, and twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other upon the six steps. There was not the like made in any kingdom. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish, with the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory, and apes, and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon, to hear his wisdom, which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present, vessels of silver, and vessels of gold, and garments, and armor, and spices, horses, and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots, and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem, as stones, and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt, and linen yarn. The king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and an horse for an hundred and fifty. And so for all the kings of the Hittites, and for the kings of Syria, did they bring them out by their means. Chapter 11 But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, 
and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding, in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Howbeit, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son, for David, my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And the Lord stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite. He was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass, when David was in Edom, and Joab, the captain of the host, was gone up to bury the slain, after he had smitten every male in Edom. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel, until he had cut off every male in Edom. That Hadad fled, he and certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. And they arose out of Midian, and came to Paran. And they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt, unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which gave him an house, and appointed him victuals, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Taphanes, the queen. And the sister of Taphanes bare him Genubath, his son, whom Taphanes weaned in Pharaoh's house. And Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt, that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab, the captain of the host, was dead. Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go into mine own country. Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that, behold, thou seekest to go to thine own country? And he answered, Nothing, howbeit, let me go in any wise. And God stirred him up another adversary, Rezon, the son of Eliada, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men unto him, and became captain over a band, when David slew them of Zobah. And they went to Damascus, and dwelt therein, and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel, and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam, 
the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zerida, Solomon's servant, whose mother's name was Zarua, a widow woman. Even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo, and repaired the breaches of the city of David, his father. And the man, Jeroboam, was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man, that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Pharaoh. And it came to pass, at that time, when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shilonite, found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment. And they two were alone in the field, and Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee, but he shall have one tribe for my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, and Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways, to do that which is right in mine eyes, and to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Howbeit, I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life, for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David, my servant, may have a light hallway before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not for ever. Solomon sought, therefore, to kill Jeroboam. And Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, unto Shishak, king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. And the rest of the acts of Solomon, all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father. And Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 12 and Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for 
he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came, and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father, and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us, lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants for ever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lead you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebat. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, O Israel, now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones, that he died. Therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot, to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, 
that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all israel there was none that followed the house of david but the tribe of judah only and when rehoboam was come to jerusalem he assembled all the house of judah with the tribe of benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men which were warriors to fight against the house of israel to bring the kingdom again to rehoboam the son of solomon but the word of god came unto shemaiah the man of god saying speak unto rehoboam the son of solomon king of judah and unto all the house of judah and benjamin and to the remnant of the people saying thus saith the lord ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren the children of israel return every man to his house for this thing is from me they hearkened therefore to the word of the lord and returned to depart according to the word of the lord then jeroboam built shechem in mount ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from thence and built penuel and jeroboam said in his heart now shall the kingdom return to the house of david if this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the lord at jerusalem then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their lord even unto rehoboam king of judah and they shall kill me and go again to rehoboam king of judah whereupon the king took counsel and made two calves of gold and said unto them it is too much for you to go up to jerusalem behold thy gods o israel which brought thee up out of the land of egypt and he set the one in bethel and the other put he in dan and this thing became a sin for the people went to worship before the one even unto dan and he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people which were not of the sons of levi and jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month on the fifteenth day of the month like unto the feast that is in judah and he offered upon the altar so did he in bethel sacrificing unto the calves that he had made and he placed in bethel the priests of the high places which he had made so he offered upon the altar which he had made in bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month even in the month which he had devised of his own heart and ordained a feast unto the children of israel and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense chapter thirteen and behold there came a man of god out of judah by the word of the lord unto bethel and jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense and he cried against the altar in the word of the lord and said o altar altar thus saith the lord behold a child shall be born unto the house of david josiah by name and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee and he gave a sign the same day saying this is the sign which the lord hath spoken behold the altar shall be rent 
and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, Which way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me, By the word of the Lord, thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest? He said unto him, I am a prophet, also as thou art, and an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him, and did eat bread in his house, and drank water. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandments which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass, to wit, for the prophet whom he had brought back. 
and when he was gone a lion met him by the way and slew him and his carcass was cast in the way and the ass stood by it the lion also stood by the carcass and behold men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt and when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof he said it is the man of god who was disobedient unto the word of the lord therefore the lord hath delivered him unto the lion which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the lord which he spake unto him and he spake to his sons saying saddle me the ass and they saddled him and he went and found his carcass cast in the way and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass the lion had not eaten the carcass nor torn the ass and the prophet took up the carcass of the man of god and laid it upon the ass and brought it back and the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him and he laid his carcass in his own grave and they mourned over him saying alas my brother and it came to pass after he had buried him that he spake to his sons saying when i am dead then bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of god is buried lay my bones beside his bones for the saying which he cried by the word of the lord against the altar in bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of samaria shall surely come to pass after this thing jeroboam returned not from his evil way but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places whosoever would he consecrated him and he became one of the priests of the high places and this thing became sin unto the house of jeroboam even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the face of the earth chapter fourteen at that time abijah the son of jeroboam fell sick and jeroboam said to his wife arise i pray thee and disguise thyself that thou be not known to be the wife of jeroboam and get thee to shiloh behold there is ahijah the prophet which told me that i should be king over this people and take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruse of honey and go to him he shall tell thee what shall become of the child and jeroboam's wife did so and arose and went to shiloh and came to the house of ahijah but ahijah could not see for his eyes were set by reason of his age then the lord said unto ahijah behold the wife of jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son for he is sick thus and thus shalt thou say unto her for it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another woman and it was so when ahisha heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door that he said come in thou wife of jeroboam why feignest thou thyself to be another for i am sent to thee with heavy tidings 
go tell Jeroboam. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, for as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee, and yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes, but hast done evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images, to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat, for the Lord hath spoken it. Arise thou, therefore, get thee to thine own house, and when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die, and all Israel shall mourn for him, and bury him. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now, for the Lord shall smite Israel, as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of this good land which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking the Lord to anger. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin, and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose, and departed, and came to Tirzah. And when she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. And they buried him, and all Israel mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by the hand of his servant Ahijah the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers. And Nadab his son reigned in his stead. And Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign. And he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nema, an Ammonitess. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins which they had committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places and images and groves on every high hill and under every green tree. And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. 
and it came to pass in the fifth year of king rehoboam that shishak king of egypt came up against jerusalem and he took away the treasures of the house of the lord and the treasures of the king's house he even took away all and he took away all the shields of gold which solomon had made and king rehoboam made in their stead brazen shields and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard which kept the door of the king's house and it was so when the king went into the house of the lord that the guard bare them and brought them back into the guard chamber now the rest of the acts of rehoboam and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and there was war between rehoboam and jeroboam all their days and rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of david and his mother's name was nama an ammonitus and abijam his son reigned in his stead End of section 35section thirty six of the holy bible the king james version first kings chapters fifteen to twenty one this recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta chapter fifteen now in the eighteenth year of king jeroboam the son of nebat reigned abijam over judah Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Mecha, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him, and to establish Jerusalem, because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, and turned not aside from any thing that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, all the days of his life now the rest of the acts of abijam and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and there was war between abijam and jeroboam and abijam slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of david and asa his son reigned in his stead and in the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel reigned Asa over Judah. And forty and one years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Mekah, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Mekah, his mother, even her he removed from being queen, because she had made an idol in a grove, and Asa destroyed her idol, and burnt it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which himself had dedicated, into the house of the Lord, silver and gold and vessels. 
and there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. And Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah, and built Ramah that he might not suffer any to go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house, and delivered them into the hand of his servants. And king Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tebrimon, the son of Hazian, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, there is a league between me and thee, and between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent unto thee a present of silver and gold. Come and break thy league with Baasha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So Ben-Hadad hearkened unto king Asa, and sent the captains of the host which he had against the cities of Israel, and smote Aijan and Dan, and abel beth and all Sinaroth, with all the land of Naphtali. And it came to pass, when Baasha heard thereof, that he left off building of Ramah, and dwelt in Tirzah. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah. None was exempted. And they took away the stones of Ramah, and the timber thereof, wherewith Baasha had built it. And King Asa built with them Geba of Benjamin, and Mizpah. The rest of all the acts of Asa, and all his might, and all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet, and Asa slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead. And Nadab the son of Jeroboam began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah, and reigned over Israel two years and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin, wherewith he made Israel to sin. And Baasha, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Baasha smote him at Kibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Even in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, did Baasha slay him, and reigned in his stead. And it came to pass, when he reigned, that he smote all the house of Jeroboam. He left not to Jeroboam any that breathed, until he had destroyed him, according unto the saying of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. Because of the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned, and which he made Israel sin, by his provocation wherewith he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, began Baasha, the son of Ahijah, to reign over all Israel in Tirzah, twenty and four years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. Chapter 16 Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying, Forasmuch as I exalted thee out of the dust, 
and made thee prince over my people Israel, and thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam, and hast made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with their sins. Behold, I will take away the posterity of Basha, and the posterity of his house, and will make thy house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Him that dieth of Basha in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth of his in the fields shall the fowls of the air eat. Now the rest of the acts of Basha, and what he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Basha slept with his fathers, and was buried in Tirzah. And Elah, his son, reigned in his stead. And also by the hand of the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, came the word of the Lord against Basha, and against his house, even for all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, in provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, in being like the house of Jeroboam, and because he killed him. In the twenty and sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah, the son of Basha, to reign over Israel in Tirzah two years. And his servant Zimri, captain of half his chariots, conspired against him, as he was in Tirzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arsa, steward of his house in Tirzah. And Zimri went in and smote him, and killed him, in the twenty and seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. And it came to pass, when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all the house of Basha. He left him not one that pisseth against a wall, neither of his kinsfolks, nor of his friends. Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Basha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake against Basha by Jehu the prophet. For all the sins of Basha, and the sins of Elah his son, by which they sinned, and by which they made Israel to sin, in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rests of the acts of Elah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? In the twenty and seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, did Zimri reign seven days in Tirzah, and the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri hath conspired, and hath also slain the king. Wherefore all Israel made Omri, the captain of the host, king of Israel, that day in camp. And Omri went up from Gibbethon, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. And it came to pass, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the palace of the king's house, and burnt the king's house over him with fire, and died. For his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, and walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin, which he did, to make Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri, and his treason that he wrought, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then were the people of Israel divided into two parts. Half the people followed Tibni, the son of Ginath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people that followed Omri prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Ginath. 
so Tibnai died, and Omri reigned. In the thirty and first year of Asa, king of Judah, began Omri to reign over Israel. Twelve years. Six years reigned he in Tirzah. And he bought the hill Samaria of Shimmer for two talents of silver, and built on the hill, and called the name of the city which he built after the name of Shimer, owner of the hill, Samaria. But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did worse than all that were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Omri, which he did, and his might that he shewed, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Omri slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbal, king of the Zidonians, and went and served Baal, and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal, in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria, and Ahab made a grove. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his young days did Hiel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. Chapter 17 And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So, he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her, and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, 
a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruse of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass, after these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried him up into a loft where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times, and cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child, and brought him down out of the chamber into the house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Chapter 18 And it came to pass, after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go, shew thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab, and there was a sore famine in Samaria. And Ahab called Obadiah, which was the governor of his house. Now Obadiah feared the Lord greatly. For it was so, when Jezebel cut off the prophets of the Lord, that Obadiah took an hundred prophets, and hid them by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And Ahab said unto Obadiah, Go into the land, unto all fountains of water, and unto all brooks. Our adventure we may find grass to save the horses and the mules alive that we lose not all the beasts. So they divided the land between them to pass throughout it, 
Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, and he knew him, and fell on his face, and said, Art thou that my lord, Elijah? And he answered him, I am. Go, tell thy lord, behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned, that thou wouldest deliver thy servant into the hand of Ahab, to slay me? As the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom, whither my Lord hath not sent to seek thee. And when they said, He is not here, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation, that they found thee not. And now thou sayest, Go tell my Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and it shall come to pass, as soon as I am gone from thee, that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry thee away, whither I know not. And so, when I come and tell Ahab, and he cannot find thee, he shall slay me. But I, thy servant, fear the Lord from my youth. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid an hundred men of the Lord's prophets by fifty in a cave, and fed them with bread and water? And now thou sayest, Go, tell thy Lord, behold, Elijah is here, and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely shew myself unto him to-day. So Obadiah went to meet Ahab, and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elisha. And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elisha, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now, therefore, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, four hundred and fifty, and the prophets of the groves, four hundred, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel, and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elisha came unto all the people, and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elisha unto the people, I, even I, only remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them, therefore, give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered, and said, It is well spoken. And Elisha said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. And they took the bullock which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal, from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal! Hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. 
and they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass, at noon, that Elisha mocked them, and said, Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he is talking, or he is pursuing, or he is in a journey, or, peradventure, he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud, and cut themselves, after their manner, with knives and lancets, till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. And Elisha said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round the altar, and he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. And Elisha said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them. And Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon, and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth, and put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked, and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again, seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, 
that the rains stop thee not. And it came to pass, in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elisha. And he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Chapter 19 And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elisha had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elisha, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And when he saw that, he arose, and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him, and said unto him, Arise, and eat. And he looked, and, behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruse of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise, and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose, and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mounds of God. And he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. And, behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth, and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And, behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out, and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him, and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, 
they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshai, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abemeholah, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass, that him that escapeth the sword of Hazael shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. So he departed thence, and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was ploughing with twelve yoke of oxen before him, and he with the twelfth. And Elisha passed by him, and cast his mantle upon him. And he left the oxen, and ran after Elisha, and said, Let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go back again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned back from him, and took a yoke of oxen, and slew them, and boiled their flesh with the instruments of the oxen, and gave unto the people, and they did eat. Then he arose, and went after Elisha, and ministered unto him. Chapter 20 And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his host together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up, and besieged Samaria, and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also, and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine, and all that I have. And the messengers came again and said, Thus speaketh Ben-Hadad, saying, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children, yet I will send my servants unto thee to-morrow about this time, and they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land, and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me for my wives and for my children, and for my silver and for my gold, and I denied him not. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Wherefore he said unto the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, All that thou didst send for to thy servant, At the first I will do, But this thing I may not do. And the messengers departed, And brought him word again. And Ben-Hadad sent unto him, and said, The gods do so unto me, and more also, if the dust of Samaria shall suffice for handfuls for all the people that follow me. And the king of Israel answered, and said, 
tell him let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off and it came to pass when ben hadad heard this message as he was drinking he and the kings in the pavilions that he said unto his servants set yourselves in array and they set themselves in array against the city and behold there came a prophet unto ahab king of israel saying thus saith the lord hast thou seen all this great multitude behold i will deliver it into thine hand this day and thou shalt know that i am the lord and ahab said by whom and he said thus saith the lord even by the young men of the princes of the provinces and he said who shall order the battle and he answered thou then he numbered the young men of the princes of the provinces and they were two hundred and thirty-two and after them he numbered all the people even all the children of israel being seven thousand and they went out at noon but ben hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions he and the kings the thirty and two kings that helped him and the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first and ben hadad sent out and they told him saying there are men come out of samaria and he said whether they be come out for peace take them alive or whether they be come out for war take them alive so these young men of the princes of the provinces came out of the city and the army which followed them and they slew every one his man and the syrians fled and israel pursued them and ben hadad the king of syria escaped on an horse with the horsemen and the king of israel went out and smote the horses and chariots and slew the syrians with a great slaughter and the prophet came to the king of israel and said unto him go strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest for at the return of the year the king of syria will come up against thee and the servants of the king of syria said unto him their gods are gods of the hills therefore they were stronger than we but let us fight against them in the plain and surely we shall be stronger than they and do this thing take the kings away every man out of his place and put captains in their rooms and number thee like an army like the army that thou hast lost horse for horse and chariot for chariot and we will fight against them in the plain and surely we shall be stronger than they and he hearkened unto their voice and did so and it came to pass at the return of the year that ben hadad numbered the syrians and went up to aphek to fight against israel and the children of israel were numbered and were all present and went against them children of israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids but the syrians filled the country and there came a man of god and spake unto the king of israel and said thus saith the lord because the syrians have said the lord is god of the hills but he is not god of the valleys therefore will i deliver all this great multitude into thine hand and ye shall know that i am the lord and they pitched one over against the other seven days and so it was that in the seventh day the battle was joined and the children of israel slew of the syrians 
an hundred thousand footmen in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek, into the city, and there a wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left. And Ben-Hadad fled, and came into the city, into an inner chamber. And his servants said unto him, Behold now, we have heard that the kings of the house of Israel are merciful kings. Let us, I pray thee, put sackcloth on our loins, and ropes upon our heads, and go out to the king of Israel. Their adventure, he will save thy life. So they girded sackcloth on their loins, and put ropes on their heads, and came to the king of Israel, and said, Thy servant Ben-Hadad saith, I pray thee, let me live. And he said, Is he yet alive? He is my brother. Now the men did diligently observe whether anything would come from him, and did hastily catch it. And they said, Thy brother Ben-Hadad. Then he said, Go ye, bring him. Then Ben-Hadad came forth to him, and he caused him to come up into the chariot. And Ben-Hadad said unto him, The cities which my father took from thy father I will restore, and thou shalt make streets for thee in Damascus, as my father made in Samaria. Then said Ahab, I will send thee away with this covenant. So he made a covenant with him, and sent him away. And a certain man of the sons of the prophets said unto his neighbor in the word of the Lord, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man refused to smite him. Then he said unto him, Because thou hast not obeyed the voice of the Lord, behold, as soon as thou art departed from me, a lion shall slay thee. And as soon as he was departed from him, a lion found him and slew him. Then he found another man and said, Smite me, I pray thee. And the man smote him, so that in smiting he wounded him. So the prophet departed and waited for the king by the way, and disguised himself with ashes upon his face. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king, and he said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle, and behold, a man turned aside, and brought a man unto me, and said, Keep this man, if by any means he be missing, then shall thy life be for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, So shall thy judgment be. Thyself hast decided it. And he hasted, and took away the ashes from his face, and the king of Israel discerned him that he was of the prophets. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Because thou hast let go out of thy hand a man whom I appointed to utter destruction, therefore thy life shall go for his life, and thy people for his people. And the king of Israel went to his house, heavy and displeased, and came to Samaria. Chapter 21 And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house and I will give thee for it a better vineyard than it, or, if it seem good to thee, I will give thee the worth of it in money. 
and Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed, and turned away his face, and would eat no bread. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him, and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad, that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise, and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city, dwelling with Naboth. And she wrote in the letters, saying, Proclaim a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and set two men, sons of Belial, before him, to bear witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him, that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. They proclaimed a fast, and set Naboth on high among the people, and there came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him with stones, that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed, and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs licked the blood of Naboth, shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine. And Ahab said to Elisha, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, 
and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up, and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah, for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger, and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city the dogs shall eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. And he did very abominably in following idols, according to all things as did the Amorites, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard those words, that he rent his clothes, and put sackcloth upon his flesh, and fasted, and lay in sackcloth, and went softly. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Seest thou how Ahab humbleth himself before me? Because he humbleth himself before me, I will not bring the evil in his days, but in his son's days will I bring the evil upon his house. End of section 36「Section 37 of the Holy Bible, the King James Version. First Kings, Chapter 22. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 22. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria? And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, there is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But I hate him, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, 
having put on their robes, in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zedekiah the son of Canaanah made him horns of iron, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians, until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth-Gilead, and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, Go and prosper. For well, the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. And the king said unto him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord? And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him, on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth, and do so. Now, therefore, Behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. But Zedekiah the son of Canaanah went near, and smote Micaiah on the cheek, and said, Which way went the spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah, and carry him back unto Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord hath not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat the king of Judah 
went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself, and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself, and went into the battle. But the king of Syria commanded his thirty and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him, and Jehoshaphat cried out, and it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand, and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, and the king was stayed up in his chariot against the Syrians, and died at even. And the blood ran out of the wound into the midst of the chariot. And there went a proclamation throughout the host about the going down of the sun, saying, Every man to his city, and every man to his own country. So the king died, and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. And one washed the chariot in the pool of Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood. And they washed his armor according unto the word of the Lord which he spake. Now the rest of the acts of Ahab, and all that he did, and the ivory house which he made, and all the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Ahab slept with his fathers, and Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead, and Jehoshaphat the son of Asa began to reign over Judah in the fourth year of Ahab king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Azubah, the daughter of Shilhai. And he walked in all the ways of Asa, his father. He turned not aside from it, doing that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away, for the people offered and burnt incense yet in the high places. And Jehoshaphat made peace with the king of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat, and his might that he shewed, and how he warred, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And the remnant of the Sodomites, which remained in the days of his father Asa, he took out of the land. There was then no king in Edom. A deputy was king. Jehoshaphat made ships of Tharshish to go to Ophir for gold. But they went not, for the ships were broken at Ezion Geber. Then said Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, unto Jehoshaphat, Let my servants go with thy servants in the ships. But Jehoshaphat would not. And Jehoshaphat slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoram his son reigned in his stead. 
Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in the way of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal, and worshipped him, and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel, according to all that his father had done. End of section 37section thirty eight of the holy bible the king james version second kings chapters one through eight this recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta then moab rebelled against israel after the death of ahab and ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in samaria and was sick and he sent messengers, and said unto them, Go inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel? that ye go to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came up a man to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, what manner of man was he which came up to meet you, and told you these words? And they answered him, He was an hairy man, and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty, and he went up to him, and, behold, he sat on the top of an hill, and he spake unto them, Thou, man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elisha answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven, and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven, and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty, with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elisha answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up, and came 
and fell on his knees before Elisha, and besought him, and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life, and the life of these fifty, thy servants, be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven, and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties, with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elisha, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose, and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died, according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Chapter 2 And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head to-day? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elisha said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head to-day? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophets went, and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, and wrapped it together, and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass, when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went on and talked, that, behold, 
there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes, and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and went back, and stood by the bank of Jordan, and he took the mantle of Elisha that fell from him, and smote the waters, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up, and cast him upon some mountain, or into some valley, and he said, He shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, Send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my lord seeth. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head! Go up, thou bald head! And he turned back, and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. Chapter 3 Now Jehoram the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat king of Judah and reigned twelve years, and he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom, and Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep-master, and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs, and an hundred thousand rams, with the wool. But it came to pass, when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. 
and King Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time, and numbered all Israel. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab hath rebelled against me. Wilt thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, Which way shall we go up? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey. And there was no water for the host, and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord, that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father, and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, Surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass, when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also, into your hand, and he shall smite every fenced city, and every choice city, and shall fell every good tree, and stop all wells of water, and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning, when the meat offering was offered, that, behold, there came water by the way of Edom and the country was filled with water. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor, and upward, and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, This is blood. The kings are surely slain, and they have smitten one another. Now, therefore, Moab, to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites, so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country. 
and they beat down the cities, and on every good piece of land cast every man his stone, and filled it, and they stopped all the wells of water, and felled all the good trees. Only in Kirharasath left they the stones thereof. Howbeit the slingers went about it, and smote it. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him seven hundred men that drew swords to break through, even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son, that should have reigned in his stead, and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him, and returned to their own land. Chapter 4 Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee, and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her, and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go. Sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is an holy man of God which passeth us by continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king, or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among mine own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she hath no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, 
thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived, and bare a son, at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to the time of life. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon, and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him, and went out. And she called unto her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God, and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him to-day? It is neither new moon, nor sabbath, and she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass, and said to her servant, Drive, and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God, to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord hath hid it from me, and hath not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins, and take my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute to thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awaked. And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. He went in, therefore, and shut the door upon them twain, and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up, and lay upon the child, and put his mouth upon his mouth, and his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned, and walked in the house to and fro, and went up, and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi, and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was coming unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in, 
and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son, and went out. And Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Set on the great pot, and seeth pottage for the sons of the prophets. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild gourds, his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. So they poured out for the men to eat. And it came to pass, as they were eating of the pottage, that they cried out and said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot. And they could not eat thereof. But he said, Then bring meal. And he cast it into the pot. And he said, Pour out for the people that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. And there came a man from Baal-Shalisha, and brought the man of God, bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn, in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, what should I set this before an hundred men? He said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, They shall eat, and shall leave thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat, and left thereof, according to the word of the Lord. Chapter 5 Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honourable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valour, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies, and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, or he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, Behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God, to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore? Consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So. Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, 
go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me, and stand, and call on the name of the Lord his God, and strike his hand over the place, and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them, and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near, and spake unto him, and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather, then, when he saith to thee, Wash and be clean? Then he went down, and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. But he said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, burden of earth? For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto other gods, but unto the Lord. In this thing the Lord pardon thy servant, that when my master goeth into the house of Rimon to worship there, and he leaneth on my hand, and I bow myself in the house of Rimon, when I bow myself in the house of Rimon, the Lord pardon thy servant in this thing. And he said unto him, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. But Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master hath spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him, and take somewhat of him. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him, and said, Is all well? And he said, All is well. My master hath sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver, and two changes of garments. And Naaman said, Be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags, with two changes of garments, and laid them upon two of his servants, and they bare them before him. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand, and bestowed them in the house, and he let the men go, and they departed. But he went in, and stood before his master, and Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said unto him, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? 
Is it a time to receive money, and to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servants, and maid servants? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed for ever. And he went out from his presence, a leper as white as snow. Chapter 6 And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he shewed him the place. And he cut down a stick, and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand, and took it. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants, and said unto them, Will ye not shew me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night, and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and had gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed, and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. 
but he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And, behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink, and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away, and they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. And it came to pass, after this, that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all his host, and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria. And, behold, they besieged it, until an ass's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver, and the fourth part of a cap of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon a wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the lord do not help me, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor, or out of the wine press? And the king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son, that we may eat him to-day, and we will eat my son to-morrow. So we boiled my son, and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son, that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. And it came to pass, when the king heard the words of the woman, that he rent his clothes, and he passed by upon the wall, and the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth within upon his flesh. Then he said, God do so, and more also to me, if the head of Elisha the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. But Elisha sat in his house, and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. But ere the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, See ye how this son of a murderer hath sent to take away mine head, Look, when the messenger cometh, shut the door, and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? And while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came down unto him. And he said, Behold, this evil is of the Lord. What, should I wait for the Lord any longer? Chapter 7 Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, 
thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate, and they said to one another, Why sit here until we die? If we say, We will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said to one another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight, and left their tents, and their horses, and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent, and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, We do not do well. This day is the day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither the voice of man, but horses tied, and asses tied, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night, and said unto his servants, I will now shew you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive, and get into the city. And one of his servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are as all the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, they are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed. And let us send and see. And they took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them unto Jordan. And lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messengers returned and told the king. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have the charge of the gate. And the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died, as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass, as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel, and a measure of fine flour for a shekel, shall be to-morrow, about this time in the gate of Samaria. And that Lord answered the man of God, and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. 
and so it fell out unto him. For the people trod upon him in the gate, and he died. Chapter 8 Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose son he had restored to life, saying, Arise, and go thou, and thine household, and sojourn wheresoever thou canst sojourn, for the Lord hath called for a famine, and it shall also come upon the land seven years. And the woman arose, and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with her household, and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass, at the seven years' end, that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elisha hath done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that, behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, My lord, O king, this is the woman, and this is her son, whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, so the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers, and all the fruits of the field, since the day that she left the land, even until now. And Elisha came to Damascus. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, The man of God is come hither. And the king said unto Hazael, Take a present in thine hand, and go, meet the man of God, and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? So Hazael went to meet him, and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, forty camels of burden, and came and stood before him, and said, Thy son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, hath sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? And Elisha said unto him, Go say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. Howbeit, the Lord hath showed me that he shall surely die. And he settled his countenance steadfastly, until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. And Hazael said, Why weepeth my lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds wilt thou set on fire, and their young men wilt thou slay with the sword, and wilt dash their children, and rip up their women with child. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog, that he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered, The Lord hath shewed me that thou shalt be king over Syria. So he departed from Elisha, and came to his master, who said to him, What said Elisha to thee? And he answered, he told me that thou shouldst surely recover. And it came to pass, on the morrow, that he took a thick cloth, and dipped it in water, and spread it on his face, so that he died. And Hazael reigned in his stead. And in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. 
and he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as did the house of Ahab, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Yet the Lord would not destroy Judah for David, his servant's sake, as he promised him to give him alway a light, and to his children. In his days Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah, and made a king over themselves. So Joram went over to Zair, and all the chariots with him, and he rose by night, and smote the Edomites which compassed him about, and the captains of the chariots. And the people fled into their tents. Yet Edom revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. Then Libna revolted at the same time. And the rest of the acts of Joram, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Joram slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And Ahaziah his son reigned in his stead. In the twelfth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin to reign. Two and twenty years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. And he walked in the way of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the sight of the Lord, as did the house of Ahab, for he was the son-in-law of the house of Ahab. And he went with Joram, the son of Ahab, to the war against Hazael, king of Syria, in Ramoth-Gilead. And the Syrians wounded Joram. And King Joram went back to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him at Ramah when he fought against Hazael, king of Syria. And Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to see Joram, the son of Ahab, in Jezreel, because he was sick. End of section 38Section 39 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Second Kings, chapters 9 through 17. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 9. And Elisha the prophet called one of the children of the prophets, and said unto him, Gird up thy loins, and take this box of oil in thine hand. And go to Ramoth Gilead, and when thou comest thither, look out there Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, and go in, and make him arise up from among his brethren, and carry him to an inner chamber, then take the box of oil, and pour it on his head, and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then open the door and flee, and tarry not. So the young man, even the young man, the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. And when he came, behold, the captains of the host were sitting, and he said, I have an errand to thee, O captain. And Jehu said, Unto which of all us? And he said, to thee, O captain. And he arose and went into the house. And he poured the oil on his head, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I have anointed thee king over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And thou shalt smite the house of Ahab, thy master, that I may avenge the blood of my servants, the prophets and the blood of all the servants of the Lord at the hand of Jezebel. 
for the whole house of Ahab shall perish. And I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel in the portion of Jezreel, and there shall be none to bury her. And he opened the door and fled. Then Jehu came forth to the servants of his lord, and one said unto him, is all well? Wherefore came this mad fellow to thee? And he said unto them, Ye know the man, and his communication. And they said, It is false. Tell us now. And he said, Thus and thus spake he to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed thee king over Israel. Then they hasted, and took every man his garment, and put it under him on top of the stairs, and blew with trumpets, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshai, conspired against Joram. Now Joram had kept Ramoth Gilead, he and all Israel, because of Hazael, king of Syria. But King Joram was returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Syrians had given him when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. And Jehu said, If it be your minds, then let none go forth, nor escape out of the city to go to tell it in Jezreel. So Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram lay there, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, was come down to see Joram. And there stood a watchman on the tower in Jezreel, and he spied the company of Jehu as he came, and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take an horseman, and send to meet them, and let him say, Is it peace? So there went one on horseback to meet him, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, The messenger came to them, but he cometh not again. Then he sent out a second on horseback, which came to them, and said, Thus saith the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What hast thou to do with peace? Turn thee behind me. And the watchman told, saying, He came even unto them, and cometh not again. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshai, for he driveth furiously. And Joram said, Make ready. And his chariot was made ready. And Joram, king of Israel, and Hazia, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out against Jehu, and met him in the portion of Naboth, the Jezreelite. And it came to pass, when Joram saw Jehu, that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many? And Joram turned his hand and fled, and said to Ahaziah, There is treachery. O Ahaziah! And Jehu drew a bow with his full strength, and smote Jehoram between his arms, and the arrow went out at his heart, and he sunk down in his chariot. 
Then said Jehu to Bidkar, his captain, Take up and cast him in the portion of the field of Naboth, the Jezreelite. For remember how that when I and thou rode together after Ahab his father, the Lord laid this burden upon him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his sons, saith the Lord, and I will requite thee in this plat, saith the Lord. Now therefore take and cast him into the plat of ground, according to the word of the Lord. But when Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this, he fled by the way of the garden house. And Jehu followed after him, and said, Smite him also in the chariot. And they did so, at the going up to Gur, which is by Ebliam. And he fled to Megiddo, and died there. And his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in his sepulchre with his fathers in the city of David. And in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face, and tired her head, and looked out a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, she said, Had Zimri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window, and said, Who is on my side? Who? And there looked out to him two or three eunuchs. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And he trode her under foot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink, and said, Go see now this cursed woman, and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Wherefore they came again and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as dung upon the face of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, This is Jezebel. Chapter 10 And Ahab had seventy sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters, and sent to Samaria, unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying, Now, as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. But they were exceedingly afraid, and said, Behold, two kings stood not before him. How then shall we stand? And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Jehu, saying, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. We will not make any king. Do thou which is good in thine eyes. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them, saying, if ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, take 
ye the heads of the men, your master's sons, and come to me to Jezreel by to-morrow this time. Now the king's sons, being seventy persons, were with the great men of the city, which brought them up. And it came to pass, when the letter came to them, that they took the king's sons, and slew seventy persons, and put their heads in baskets, and sent him, them, to Jezreel. And there came a messenger, and told him, saying, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, Lay ye them in two heaps, at the entering in of the gate, until the morning. And it came to pass, in the morning, that he went out and stood, and said to all the people, Ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master, and slew him. But who slew all these? No, now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men, and his kinsfolks, and his priests, until he left him none remaining. And he arose and departed, and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah, and we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. And he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive, and slew them at the pit of the shearing house, even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. And when he was departed thence, he lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him, and said to him, Is thine heart right, as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up to him into the chariot. And he said, Come with me, and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria, till he had destroyed them, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. And Jehu gathered all the people together, and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants, and all his priests. Let none be wanting, for I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. But Jehu did it in subtlety, to the intent that he might destroy the worshippers of Baal. And Jehu said, Proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshippers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto him that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshippers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. And Jehu went, 
and Jehonadab the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshippers of Baal, Search and look, that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but the worshippers of Baal only. And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword. And the guard and the captains cast them out, and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal, and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal, and break down the house of Baal, and made it a draught house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Howbeit, from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to it the golden calves that were in Bethel, and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in mine heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coasts of Israel, from Jordan eastward all the land of Gilead, the Gadites and the Reubenites and the Manassites, from Aroer, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan, now the rest of the acts of Jehu, and all that he did, and all his might. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Jehoahaz his son reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel in Samaria was twenty and eight years. Chapter 11 And when Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Joram, sister of Ahaziah, took Joash, the son of Ahaziah, and stole him from among the king's sons, which were slain. And they hid him, even him, and his nurse, in the bedchamber, from Athaliah, so that he was not slain. And he was with her, hid in the house of the Lord, six years. And Athaliah did reign over the land. And the seventh year Jehoiada sent and fetched the rulers over hundreds, with the captains and the guard, and brought them to him into the house of the Lord and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them in the house of the Lord, and shewed them the king's son. And he commanded them, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do. A third part of you that enter in on the Sabbath shall even be keepers of the watch of the king's house. And... A third part shall be at the gate of Sur, and a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house, that it not be broken down. And 
two parts of all you that go forth on the sabbath even they shall keep the watch of the house of the lord about the king and ye shall compass the king round about every man with his weapons in his hand and he that cometh within the ranges let him be slain and be ye with the king as he goeth out and as he cometh in and the captains of the hundreds did according to all things that jehoiada the priest commanded and they took every man his men that were to come in on the sabbath with them that should go out on the sabbath and came to jehoiada the priest and to the captains over hundreds did the priest give king david's spears and shields that were in the temple of the lord and the guard stood every man with his weapons in his hand round about the king from the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple along by the altar and the temple and he brought forth the king's son and put the crown upon him and gave him the testimony and they made him king and anointed him and they clapped their hands and said god save the king and when athalia heard the noise of the guard and of the people she came to the people into the temple of the lord and when she looked behold the king stood by a pillar as the manner was and the princes and the trumpeters by the king and all the people of the land rejoiced and blew with trumpets and athalia rent her clothes and cried treason treason but jehoiada the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds the officers of the host and said unto them have her forth without the ranges and him that followeth her kill her with the sword for the priest had said let her not be slain in the house of the lord and they laid hands on her and she went by the way by the which the horses came into the king's house and there was she slain and jehoiada made a covenant between the lord and the king and the people that they should be the lord's people between the king also and the people and all the people of the land went into the house of baal and break it down his altars and his images break they in pieces thoroughly and slew matan the priest of baal before the altars and the priest appointed officers over the house of the lord and he took the rulers over hundreds and the captains and the guard and all the people of the land and they brought down the king from the house of the lord and came by the way of the gates of the guard to the king's house and he sat on the throne of the kings and all the people of the land rejoiced and the city was in quiet and they slew athalia with the sword beside the king's house seven years old was jehoash when he began to reign chapter twelve in the seventh year of jehu jehoash began to reign and forty years reigned he in jerusalem and his mother's name was zibiah of beersheba and jehoash did that which was right in the sight of the lord all his days wherein jehoiada the priest instructed him but the high places were not taken away the people still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and jehoash said to the priests all the money of the dedicated things that is brought into the house of the lord 
even the money of every one that passeth the account the money that every man is set at and all the money that cometh into any man's heart to bring into the house of the lord let the priests take it to them every man of his acquaintance and let them repair the breaches of the house wheresoever any breach shall be found but it was so that in the three and twentieth year of king jehoash the priests had not repaired the breaches of the house then king jehoash called for jehoiada the priest and the other priests and said unto them why repair ye not the breaches of the house now therefore receive no more money of your acquaintance but deliver it for the breaches of the house and the priests consented to receive no more money of the people neither to repair the breaches of the house but jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in the lid of it and set it beside the altar on the right side as one cometh into the house of the lord and the priests that kept the door put therein all the money that was brought into the house of the lord and it was so when they saw that there was much money in the chest that the king's scribe and the high priest came up and they put up in bags and told the money that was found in the house of the lord and they gave the money being told into the hands of them that did the work that had the oversight of the house of the lord and they laid it out to the carpenters and builders that wrought upon the house of the lord and to masons and hewers of stone and to buy timber and hewed stone to repair the breaches of the house of the lord and for all that was laid out for the house to repair it howbeit there were not made for the house of the lord bowls of silver snuffers basins trumpets any vessels of gold or vessels of silver of the money that was brought into the house of the lord but they gave that to the workmen and repaired therewith the house of the lord moreover they reckoned not with the men into whose hand they delivered the money to be bestowed on workmen for they dealt faithfully the trespass money and sin money was not brought into the house of the lord it was the priests then hazael king of syria went up and fought against gath and took it and hazael set his face to go up to jerusalem and jehoash king of judah took all the hallowed things that jehoshaphat and jehoram and ahaziah his fathers kings of judah had dedicated and his own hallowed things and all the gold that was found in the treasures of the house of the lord and in the king's house and sent it to hazael king of syria and he went away from jerusalem and the rest of the acts of joash and all that he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and his servants arose and made a conspiracy and slew joash in the house of milo which goeth down to silla for Josachar the son of shimeath and jehozabad the son of shomer his servants smote him and he died and they buried him with his fathers in the city of david and amaziah his son reigned in his stead chapter thirteen in the three and twentieth year of joash the son of ahaziah king of judah jehoahaz the son of jehu began to reign over israel in samaria and reigned seventeen years and he did that which was evil in the sight of the lord 
and followed the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he delivered them into the hand of Hazael, king of Syria, and into the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, all their days. And Jehoahaz besought the Lord, and the Lord hearkened unto him. For he saw the oppression of Israel, because the king of Syria oppressed them. And the Lord gave Israel a savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians. And the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Nevertheless, they departed not from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, who made Israel sin, but walked therein. And there remained a grove also in Samaria. Neither did he leave of the people to Jehoahaz, but fifty horsemen, and ten chariots, and ten thousand footmen. For the king of Syria had destroyed them, and had made them like the dust by threshing. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoahaz, and all that he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehoahaz slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria. And Joash his son reigned in his stead. In the thirty and seventh year of Joash king of Judah began Jehoash the son of Jehoahaz to reign over Israel in Samaria, and reigned sixteen years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel sin, but he walked therein. And the rest of the acts of Joash, and all that he did, and his might, wherewith he fought against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Joash slept with his fathers. And Jeroboam sat upon his throne, and Joash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him, and wept over his face, and said, O oh, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof, and Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot! And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek, till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows. And he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice, and stayed. And the man of God was wroth with him, and said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times, then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. And it came to pass, as they were burying a man, that, behold, they spied a band of men, and they cast the man into the sepulchre of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. 
Hazael, king of Syria, oppressed Israel all the days of Jehoahaz. And the Lord was gracious unto them, and had compassion on them, and had respect unto them, because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and would not destroy them. Neither cast he them from his presence as yet. So Hazael, king of Syria, died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, reigned in his stead. And Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, took again out of the hand of Ben-Hadad, the son of Hazael, the cities which he had taken out of the hand of Jehoahaz, his father, by war. Three times did Joash beat him, and recovered the cities of Israel. Chapter 14 In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, reigned Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah. He was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jehoaddin of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, yet not like David his father, he did according to all things as Joash his father did. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, as yet the people did sacrifice and burned incense on the high places. And it came to pass, as soon as the kingdom was confirmed in his hand, that he slew his servants, which had slain the king, his father. But the children of the murderers he slew not, according unto that which is written in the book of the law of Moses, wherein the Lord commanded, saying, The fathers shall not be put to death for the children, nor the children be put to death for the fathers but every man shall be put to death for his own sin. He slew of Edom in the valley of Salt ten thousand, and took Selah by war, and called the name of it Jokthiel unto this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, the son of Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, king of Israel, saying, Come. Let us look one another in the face. And Jehoash, the king of Israel, sent to Amaziah, king of Judah, saying, The thistle that was in Lebanon sent to the cedar that was in Lebanon, saying, Give thy daughter to my son to wife. And there passed by a wild beast that was in Lebanon, and trode down the thistle. Thou hast indeed smitten Edom, and thine heart hath lifted thee up. Glory of this, and tarry at home, for why shouldest thou meddle to thy hurt, that thou shouldest fall, even thou and Judah with thee? But Amaziah would not hear. Therefore Jehoash king of Israel went up, and he and Amaziah king of Judah looked one another in the face at Beth Shemesh, which belongeth to Judah. And Judah was put to the worse before Israel, and they fled every man to their tents. And Jehoash, king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Jehoash, the son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh, and came to Jerusalem and break down the wall of Jerusalem, from the gate of Ephraim unto the corner gate, four hundred cubits. And he took all the gold and silver, and all the vessels that were found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king's house, and hostages, and returned to Samaria. Now the rest of the acts of Joash, which he did, and his might, and how he fought with Amaziah, king of Judah. Are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? 
and Jehoash slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam his son reigned in his stead. And Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, fifteen years. And the rest of the acts of Amaziah, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Now they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent after him to Lachish, and slew him there. And they brought him on horses, and he was buried at Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. And all the people of Judah took Azariah, which was sixteen years old, and made him king instead of his father Amaziah. He built Elath, and restored it to Judah, after that the king slept with his fathers. In the fifteenth year of Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel, began to reign in Samaria, and reigned forty and one years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from all the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. He restored the coast of Israel from the entering of Hamath unto the sea of the plain, according to the word of the Lord God of Israel, which he spake by the hand of his servant Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, which was in Gathhefer. For the Lord saw the affliction of Israel, that it was very bitter, for there was not any shut up, nor any left, nor any helper for Israel. And the Lord said not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, but he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, and all that he did, and his might, how he warred, and how he recovered Damascus and Hamath, which belonged to Judah, for Israel, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jeroboam slept with his fathers, even with the kings of Israel. And Zechariah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 15 In the twenty and seventh year of Jeroboam king of Israel began Azariah son of Amaziah king of Judah to reign. Sixteen years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned two and fifty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jecoliah of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah had done, save that the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burnt incense still on the high places. And the Lord smote the king, so that he was a leper unto the day of his death and dwelt in a several house. And Jotham, the king's son, was over the house, judging the people of the land. And the rest of the acts of Azariah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Azariah slept with his fathers, and they buried him with his fathers in the city of David. And Jotham, his son, reigned in his stead. In the thirty and eighth year of Azariah, king of Judah, did Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam, reign over Israel in Samaria six months. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his fathers had done. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against him, and smote him before the people, and slew him, 
and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Zechariah, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. This was the word of the Lord, which he spake unto Jehu, saying, Thy sons shall sit on the throne of Israel unto the fourth generation. And so it came to pass. Shalom the son of Jabesh began to reign in the nine and thirtieth year of Uzziah, king of Judah. And he reigned a full month in Samaria. For Menahem the son of Gadi went up from Tirzah and came to Samaria and smote Shalom the son of Jabesh in Samaria and slew him and reigned in his stead. And the rest of the acts of Shalom and his conspiracy which he made, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. Then Menahem smote Tifsah and all that were therein, and the coasts thereof from Tirzah, because they opened not to him. Therefore he smote it. And all the women therein that were with child, he ripped up. In the nine and thirtieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, began Menahem, the son of Gadi, to reign over Israel, and reigned ten years in Samaria. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not all his days from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. And Puel, the king of Assyria, came against the land. And Menahem gave Puel a thousand talents of silver, that his hand might be with him to confirm the kingdom in his hand. And Menahem exacted the money of Israel, even of all the mighty men of wealth, of each man fifty shekels of silver to give to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria turned back and stayed not there in the land. And the rest of the acts of Menahem and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Menahem slept with his fathers. And Pekahia, his son, reigned in his stead. In the fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekahia, the son of Menahem, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and reigned two years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. But Pekah, the son of Remaliah, a captain of his, conspired against him, and smote him in Samaria, in the palace of the king's house, with Argob and Ariah, and with him fifty men of the Gileadites. And he killed him, and reigned in his room. And the rest of the acts of Pekahiah, and all that he did, Behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. In the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, the son of Remaliah, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and reigned twenty years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. He departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. In the days of Pekah, king of Israel, came Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and took Aijon, and abel and Janoah, and Kedesh, and Hazor, and Gilead, and Galilee, all the land of Naphtali, and carried them captive to Assyria. And Hoshea, the son of Elah, made a conspiracy against Pika, the son of Ramalia, and smote him, and slew him, and reigned in his stead, in the twentieth year of Jotham, the son of Uzziah. And the rest of the acts of Pika, and all that he did, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. 
in the second year of Pekah, the son of Ramalia, king of Israel, began Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, to reign. Five and twenty years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did according to all that his father Uzziah had done. Howbeit, the high places were not removed. The people sacrificed and burned incense still in the high places. He built the higher gate of the house of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Jotham and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In those days the Lord began to send against Judah Rezin, the king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramalia. And Jotham slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Ahaz his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 16 in the seventeenth year of Pekah the son of Ramalia, Ahaz the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places, and on the hills, and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remalia, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria, and drave the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath, and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. For the king of Assyria went up against Damascus, and took it, and carried the people of it captive to Kir, and slew Rezin. And king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And King Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest the fashion of the altar, and the pattern of it, according to all the workmanship thereof. And Urijah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah the priest made it against King Ahaz, came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar, and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering, and his meat offering, and poured his drink offering, and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar, which was before the Lord, from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. 
and King Ahaz commanded Urijah the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering, and the evening meat offering, and the king's burnt sacrifice, and his meat offering, with the burnt offering of all the people of the land, and their meat offering, and their drink offerings, and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering, and all the blood of the sacrifice, and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Urijah the priest, according to all that King Ahaz commanded. And King Ahaz cut off the borders of the bases, and removed the laver from off them, and took down the sea from off the brazen oxen that were under it, and put it upon the pavement of stones, and the covert for the sabbath that they had built in the house, and the king's entry without, turned he from the house of the Lord, for the king of Assyria. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz, which he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Ahaz slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David, and Hezekiah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter 17 In the twelfth year of Ahaz king of Judah began Hoshea the son of Elah to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. But not as the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Syria. And Hoshea became his servant, and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up, and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land, and went up to Samaria, and besieged it three years. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria, and carried Israel away into Assyria, and placed them in Hela, and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel, and the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not right against the Lord their God. And they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And they set them up images, and groves in every high hill, and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, as did the heathen, whom the Lord carried away before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord had said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Yet the Lord testified against Israel, and against Judah, by all the prophets, and by all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments, and my statutes, according to all the law which I commanded your fathers, and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in the Lord their God. And they rejected his statutes, 
and his covenants that he made with their fathers, and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity, and became vain, and went after the heathen that were round about them, concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served Baal. And they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, and used divination and enchantments, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel, and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel, which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel, and afflicted them, and delivered them into the hand of spoilers, until he had cast them out of his sight. For he rent Israel from the house of David. And they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord, and made them sin a great sin. For the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them, until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria, unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon, and from Cutha, and from Ava, and from Hamath, and from Sepharvaim, and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria, and dwelt in the cities thereof. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and, behold, they slay them, because they know not the manner of the God of the land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests, whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests, whom they had carried away from Samaria, came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. How be it! Every nation made gods of their own, and put them in the houses of the high places, which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sakoth benoth and the men of Cuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Avites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Sepharvites burnt their children in fire to Adramelech and Anamelech, the gods of Sepharvaim. So they feared the Lord, and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods, after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes 
or after their ordinances, or after the law and commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant, and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, with great power, and a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances, and the law and the commandment, which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do for evermore and ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. How be it, they did not hearken, but they did after their former manner. So, these nations feared the Lord and served their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers. So do they unto this day. End of section 39section 40 of the holy bible the king james version second kings chapters 18 to 25 this recording is in the public domain recorded by michael armenta chapter 18 now it came to pass in the third year of hoshea son of elah king of israel that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. He removed the high places, and brake the images, and cut down the groves, and brake in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it. And he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel, so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord, and departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria, and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. And it came to pass, in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria, and besieged it. And at the end of three years they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is, the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria, and put them in Hela, and in Habor, by the river of Gozan, and in the cities of the Medes, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, and all that Moses the servant of the Lord commanded, and would not hear them, 
nor do them. Now, in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah, and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me. That which thou puttest on me will I bear. And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, three hundred talents of silver, and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord, and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan, and Rabseris, and Rabshakeh, from Lachish to King Hezekiah, with a great host against Jerusalem. And they went up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. And when they had called to the king, there came out to them Eliakim, the son of Helkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto them, Speak ye now to Hezekiah. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. <laughs> now, on whom dost thou trust, that thou rebellest against me? Now, behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. But if ye say unto me, We trust in the Lord our God, is not that he, whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away, and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now, therefore, I pray thee, give pledges to my lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able, on thy part, to set riders upon them. How, then, wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horses? Am I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it? The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna, and Joah, unto Rebshakeh, Speak, I pray thee, to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And talk not with us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. But Rebshakeh said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master, and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung, and drink their own piss with you? Then Rebshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language, and spake, saying, 
Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me, buy a present, and come out to me, and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every one of the waters of his cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of oil, olive, and of honey, that he may live and not die, and hearken not unto Hezekiah, when he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Hath any of the gods of the nation delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? But the people held their peace, and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joab the son of Asaph the recorder, to Hezekiah, with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. Chapter 19 And it came to pass, when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes, and covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rebshakeh, whom the king of Israel, his master, hath sent to reproach the living God and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor, and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rebshakeh returned and found the king of Israel warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. And when he heard say of Tir Hekah, king of Ethiopia, Behold, he is come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again unto Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, let not thy God in whom thou trustest 
deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my father have destroyed, as Gozan, and Haran, and Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Thelassar? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvaim, of Hena, and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers, and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord, and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord, and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear, and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes, and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, which have sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin the daughter of Zion hath despised thee, and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice, and lifted up thine eyes on high? Even against the Holy One of Israel. By the messengers, Thou hast reproached the Lord, and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the height of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and I will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof, and I will enter into the lodgings of his borders, and into the forest of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters, and with the sole of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? Now have I brought it to pass, that thou shouldest be to lay waste fenced cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field, and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops, and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode, and thy going out, and thy coming in, and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me, and thy tumult, is come up into mine ears, therefore I will put my hook in thy nose, and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way by which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee, 
ye shall eat this year such things as grow of themselves, and in the second year that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city, to save it, for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass that night, that the angel of the Lord went out, and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, an hundred fourscore and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed, and went and returned, and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adremelech and Sherezer, his sons, smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Eshar Hadan, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 20 In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him, and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die, and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, Remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me? and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, it is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees. 
and isaiah the prophet cried unto the lord and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of ahaz at that time beradak baladan the son of baladan king of babylon sent letters and a present unto hezekiah for he had heard that hezekiah had been sick and hezekiah hearkened unto them and shewed them all the house of his precious things the silver and the gold and the spices and the precious ointment and all the house of his armour and all that was found in his treasures there was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that hezekiah shewed them not then came isaiah the prophet unto king hezekiah and said unto him what said these men and from whence came they unto thee and hezekiah said they are come from a far country even from babylon and he said what have they seen in thine house and hezekiah answered all the things that are in mine house have they seen there is nothing among my treasures that i have not shewed them and isaiah said unto hezekiah hear the word of the lord behold the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into babylon nothing shall be left saith the lord and of thy sons that shall issue from thee which thou shalt beget shall they take away and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of babylon then said hezekiah unto isaiah good is the word of the lord which thou hast spoken and he said is it not good if peace and truth be in my days and the rest of the acts of hezekiah and all his might and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and hezekiah slept with his fathers and manasseh his son reigned in his stead chapter twenty one manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign and reigned fifty and five years in jerusalem and his mother's name was Hephziba, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, after the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he reared up altars for Baal, and made a grove, as did Ahab king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name. And he built altars for all the host of heaven, in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he made his son pass through the fire, and observed times, and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits and wizards he wrought much wickedness in the sight of the lord to provoke him to anger and he set a graven image of the grove that he had made in the house of which the lord said to david and to solomon his son in this house and in jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name for ever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers. Only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them, and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. 
but they hearkened not and manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the lord destroyed before the children of israel and the lord spake by his servants the prophets saying because manasseh king of judah hath done these abominations and hath done wickedly above all that the amorites did which were before him and hath made judah also to sin with his idols therefore thus saith the lord god of israel behold i am bringing such evil upon jerusalem and judah that whosoever heareth of it both his ears shall tingle and i will stretch over jerusalem the line of samaria and the plummet of the house of ahab and i will wipe jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish wiping it and turning it upside down and i will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of egypt even unto this day moreover manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled jerusalem from one end to another beside his sin wherewith he made judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the lord now the rest of the acts of manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uza, and Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulamath, the daughter of Haruz of Jotba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord as his father manasseh did and he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them and he forsook the lord god of his fathers and walked not in the way of the lord and the servants of ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house and the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against king ammon and the people of the land made josiah his son king in his stead now the rest of the acts of ammon which he did are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of judah and he was buried in his sepulchre in the garden of Uza, and Josiah his son reigned in his stead. Chapter twenty two. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, the daughter of Adiah of Bosketh. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, and walked in all the way of David his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass, in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, that the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go up to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people. 
and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work, which is in the house of the Lord, to repair the breaches of the house, unto carpenters and builders and masons, and to buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit, there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. And Hilkiah the high priest said unto Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe shewed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam the son of Shaphan, and Akbor the son of Micaiah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Azahiah, a servant of the king's, saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book, to do according to all that is written concerning us. So, Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam, and Akbor, and Shaphan, and Ashiah, went into Hulda, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem, in the college. And they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell me the man that sent you to me. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah had read, because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest what I spake against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes, and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Behold, therefore I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace. And thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Chapter 23 And the king sent and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. 
and the king went up into the house of the lord and all the men of judah and all the inhabitants of jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people both small and great and he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the lord and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the lord to walk after the lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant and the king commanded hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the lord all the vessels that were made for baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven and he burned them without jerusalem in the fields of kidron and carried the ashes of them into bethel and he put down the idolatrous priests whom the kings of judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of judah and in the places round about jerusalem them also that burned incense unto baal to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven and he brought out the grove from the house of the lord without jerusalem unto the brook kidron and burned it at the brook kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people and he brake down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of the lord where the women wove hangings for the grove and he brought all the priests out of the cities of judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from geba to beersheba and brake down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gates of joshua the governor of the city which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city nevertheless the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the lord in jerusalem but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren and he defiled topheth which is in the valley of the children of hinnom that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to molech and he took away the horses that the kings of judah had given to the sun at the entering in of the house of the lord by the chamber of nathan melech the chamberlain which was in the suburbs and burned the chariots of the sun with fire and the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of ahaz which the kings of judah had made and the altars which manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the lord did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook kidron and the high places that were before jerusalem which were on the right hand of the mount of corruption which solomon the king of israel had builded for ashtoreth the abomination of the Sidonians, and for Chemosh, the abomination of the Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, did the king defile. And he brake in pieces the images, and cut down the groves, and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which jeroboam the son of nebat who made israel to sin had made both that altar and the high place he brake down and burned the high place and stamped it small to powder and burned the grove 
and as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchres that were there in the mount, and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchres, and burned them upon the altars, and polluted it, according to the word of the Lord which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these words. Then he said, What title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the sepulchre of the man of God which came from Judah, and proclaimed these things that thou hast done against the altar of Bethel. And he said, Let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. And all the houses, also of the high places, that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away, and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. And he slew all the high priests of the high places that were there upon the altars, and burned men's bones upon them, and returned to Jerusalem. And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of the covenant. Surely there was not hold in such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah. But in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein this passenger was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law, which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart, and with all his soul, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. Neither after him arose there any like him. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen. And the house of which I said, my name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah, and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates. And king Josiah went against him and he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. And his servants carried him in a chariot dead from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own sepulchre. And the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him, and made him king in his father's stead. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. 
and Pharaonico put him in bands at Ribla, in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and put the land to a tribute of an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaonico made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the room of Josiah, his father, and turned his name to Jehoiakim, and took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land, of every one according to his taxation, to give it unto Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Zebuda, the daughter of Pediah of Ruma. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his fathers had done. Chapter 24 In his days Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Jehoiakim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. And the Lord sent against him bands of the Chaldees, and bands of the Syrians, and bands of the Moabites, and bands of the children of Ammon, and sent them against Judah, to destroy it, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servants, the prophets. Surely at the commandment of the Lord came this upon Judah, to remove them out of his sight, for the sins of Manasseh, according to all that he did and also for the innocent blood that he shed. For he filled Jerusalem with innocent blood, which the Lord would not pardon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? So Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim his son reigned in his stead. And the king of Egypt came not again any more out of his land, for the king of Babylon had taken from the river of Egypt unto the river Euphrates all that pertained to the king of Egypt. Jehoiakim was eighteen years old when he began to reign, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months and his mother's name was Nehushta, the daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father had done. At that time the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up against Jerusalem, and the city was besieged, and Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came against the city, and his servants did besiege it. And Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, went out to the king of Babylon, he and his mother, and his servants, and his princes, and his officers. And the king of Babylon took him in the eighth year of his reign, and he carried out thence all the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king's house, and cut in pieces all the vessels of gold which Solomon, king of Israel, had made in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had said. And he carried away all Jerusalem, and all the princes, and all the mighty men of valor, even ten thousand captives, and all the craftsmen and smith. None remained save the poorest sort of the people of the land. And he carried away Jehoiakim, 
to Babylon, and the king's mother, and the king's wives, and his officers, and the mighty of the land, those carried he into captivity from Jerusalem to Babylon. And all the men of might, even seven thousand, and craftsmen and smiths a thousand, all that were strong and apt for war, even them the king of Babylon brought captive to Babylon. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah, his father's brother, king in his stead, and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah was twenty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem, and judah until he had cast them out from his presence that zedekiah rebelled against the king of babylon chapter twenty five and it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign in the tenth month in the tenth day of the month that nebuchadnezzar king of babylon came he and all his host against jerusalem and pitched against it, and they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And on the ninth day of the fourth month the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about. And the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldees pursued after the king, and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king, and brought him up to the king of Babylon, to Riblah, and they gave judgment upon him, and they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes, and put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and bound him with fetters of brass, and carried him to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, which is the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came Nebuzaradan captain of the guard, a servant of the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem. And he burnt the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem, and every great man's house burnt he with fire. And all the armies of the Chaldees that were with the captain of the guard break down the walls of Jerusalem round about. Now, the rest of the people that were left in the city, and the fugitives that fell away to the king of Babylon, with the remnant of the multitude, did Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carry away. But the captain of the guard left of the poor of the land to be vine dressers and husbandmen. And the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord, and the bases, and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, did the Chaldees break in pieces, and carried the brass of them to Babylon. And the pots, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the firepans, and the bowls, and such things as were of gold. In gold, and of silver, in silver, the captain of the guard took away. The two pillars, one sea, and the bases which Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. The height of one pillar was eighteen cubits, and the chapiter upon it was brass, and the height of the chapiter three cubits, and the wreathen work, and pomegranates upon the chapiter round about 
all of brass, and like unto these had the second pillar with wreathen work. And the captain of the guard took Sariah, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. And out of the city he took an officer that was set over the men of war, and five men of them that were in the king's presence, which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host, which mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, took these, and brought them to the king of Babylon, to Ribla. And the king of Babylon smote them, and slew them at Ribla in the land of Hamath. So Judah was carried away out of their land. And as for the people that remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, even over them he made Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, ruler. And when all the captains of the armies, they and their men, heard that the king of Babylon had made Gedaliah governor, there came to Gedaliah, to Mizpah, even Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and Johanan, the son of Kariah, and Sariah, the son of Tanhumeth, the Netophathite, and Jazaniah, the son of Amakathite, they and their men. And Gedaliah sware to them, and to their men, and said unto them, Fear not to be servants of the Chaldees. Dwell in the land, and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But it came to pass, in the seventh month, that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishama, of the siege royal, came, and ten men with him, and smote Gedaliah, that he died, and the Jews and the Chaldees that were with him at Mizpah. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies, arose, and came to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldees. And it came to pass, in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments. And he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. End of section 40